All right. Uh, welcome, friends. It's Champa. We're back again Thursday, February 17th. And on today's episode, we're going ape mode. That's right. We're Hell yeah. The exciting new horizons of Web3. We're talking NFTs, blockchain. We're talking cryptocurrency. Uh, and to join uh, joining us to uh, explicate these very topics for us is journalist Mike Isaac. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry, I'm going yeah. mode early. I'm sorry. Ooh, right. he's on his Web3 shit. <laughs> All right, so I, I guess we should uh, get into this like the, the simplest way possible. Mike, what is Web3? And how is it different from Web 2.0? This is like the, the, the latest iteration of what uh, the, the technology the Internet promises. How does Web 3 distinguish itself from like earlier iterations of sort of tech ideology? Yeah, I, I feel like it, as with many things in tech, kind of depends on who you ask and like what their different answer is. But like the smartest thing I heard was basically Web 3 was a reband, rebranded version of crypto uh, and cryptocurrencies because everyone in DC hates the thought of cryptocurrencies because it are, always brings up the idea of like unregulated um, dark net markets and like money laundering and shit. So it's like basically just building stuff on blockchains to have a different version of the internet in the future instead of like you or me going to Facebook or um, or Google or something where we have like a central account on a database. Instead, we might use that in an account across the blockchain and everyone can see it and access it, but you own your own shit. It's very like the whole key is distributed system rather than a central system at some company. Okay. Well, actually, let me ask him an even more basic question than this. Yeah. What is the blockchain? Right. 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 So it's like a, God, how do I even really say it? It's kind of like, the, the the most basic iteration of this, like years ago, maybe maybe 10, 12 years ago, this guy kind of invented the idea. Do you remember when everyone was talking about Satoshi? Who is Satoshi? To, who yeah, is Satoshi yeah. Nakahura or uh, <laughs> uh, Kobayashi, right? <laughs> Nakamoto, I think it was. Yes. Nakamoto. Nakamoto, yeah. Uh, and, they, and then Newsweek thought they found him and then it was just a guy named satoshi nakamoto that they chased down on the on the freeway um, yeah it was really fucked up reddit found the real nakamoto but they had found jokar sarnayev <laughs> <laughs> so that was this guy named who went by satoshi nakamoto uh as his pen name like wrote this white paper long ago uh like 10 or 12 years ago basically saying here's um, this new currency uh, called Bitcoin and, you know, like a way of sort of do basically doing money so that no one sort of central power can kind of hold it all. And, and so like maybe there's too much power in, let's say, the Fed who uh, or which sort of like determines interest rates and, and like has a bunch of like basically decentralizing con concentration of power. And so blockchain tech. I'm sorry, I hate even, I'm starting to hate myself as I describe this, but blockchain tech basically. You got to do it. This is why yeah, you're here. I, I know. <laughs> we're all going to hate you too at the end of it. But questioning end of my life choices yeah, that led I'm me. I'm going to understand what the goddamn blockchain is at the end of this episode. I don't, I don't care if I have to hate you to do it. So. The, uh, <laughs> sorry, continue. The idea is like a distributed ledger. You hear the word ledger a lot of, of all the transactions that occur on this uh, tech. So if I um, move Bitcoin around from one account to the other, um, everyone else who is looking at the blockchain can see it. And um, so, you know, and it like sort of is stored on each of these computers. That's why you get into like, it's really bad for the environment or like it's, it's each sort of transaction takes a fuckload of computing power or whatever. And so, uh, and each there are multiple different types of blockchains. There's Ethereum blockchain, there's Bitcoin. So like, it's sort of a, I guess the simplest way of thinking about it is the distributed computing system that everyone has insight and access to uh, at all times. But it's... I, I really don't want to sound glib here, but like that description <laughs> just sounds like the internet to me. <laughs> yeah, that's not, you're not entirely wrong, honestly. Like, I think the difference would be, let's say like, 
if you're using Instagram, that's the, let's say that's all stored on AW, Amazon Web Services on a server somewhere, right? And like, if it's going down, like there's a central point of failure that if the fucking AWS building like has its power go out or like a car drives into it or something, like that's a that's a problem and you might not be able to use Instagram all day. Whereas in blockchain land, that uh, since it's a distributed thing, like there's no one central point of failure necessarily, I think. So they would argue that's good. That's, you know, we can all sort of do it and have access to it. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I mean, like back to like the sort of the, the, the driving ideology behind the blockchain and its proponents, like it, it does seem to be very much based in this idea of like, uh, like the de decentralized networks and this kind of, a kind of pseudo libertarian idea yep. of kind of like 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 a broad distribution of like the choke points of like you know the currency uh knowledge yep. information things like that totally. but like i was just like you know you you wrote the literally wrote the book on uber and like in like like earlier cycles of kind of like um like tech ideology like it's not just like a business that makes billions of dollars but there's like there's an ethos to it as well and like with uber it was disruption it's this idea that like you know we're gonna innovate in these spaces of like providing services that are like these moribund dinosaurs or whatever and we're gonna provide better better service to people for like less money and like the you know we're making the world a better place like yeah. how would you compare the ideology of disruption to the proponents of like sort of blockchain crypto web three like technology techno ideology so I, I think they all exist on a similar spectrum. You know, Travis Kalanick, the former CEO of Uber, had um, uh, the fountain, the book, the cover image of the Fountainhead as his Twitter avatar for a very long time. Right. And like that was sort of that said something about what he stood for. And and I think that's totally not now it's like a trope. It's not uncommon in Silicon Valley for for the guys. And it's a lot of guys to be like you know, we espouse libertarian values. We think that less smaller government is, is better. And, and, uh, you know, or at least to some degree, they, they think that, but there are a lot of contradictions in it. But I think if, if the, maybe a good way of thinking about it is like if Uber, if, if web 2.0 was about like disrupting, um, how people access the internet or how people sort of access different companies or different services before by adding like a layer of consumer internet to it web 3.0 oh my god I'm, I'm every time i say that i want to fucking just punch myself uh <laughs> web 3.0 is like this idea of taking it, it's sort of like a specious idea though they're saying we're taking power back we're providing power to individuals we're like sort of uh, since it's a distributed system, there's not going to be any Facebooks and Googles of the world. You know, it's going to be all these different things. But you see, like Andreessen Horowitz, one of the most powerful venture capital firms in Silicon Valley, plunging like literal hundreds of millions, if not billions, of dollars into this next wave of startups. And it feels like a sort of contradiction in terms. You know, like maybe they want to corner that market already. Yeah. The uh, the thing with Web point or Web two, you know, if you want to break it down into its most bare bones what is this it's using you know using everyone's desire to be a celebrity to get everyone's information get all the consumer habits get their data profile so you can package it and sell it and that seemed like oh okay this is in declining age of declining profits this is the last thing that we can package and sell but no there is one layer lower <laughs> and that's web three and web three like i feel like with all the shit that i've see now and shit that you're specifically talking about i feel like meta and nfts it's all like we're in the 1970s we're all seeing the worst version of something that will eventually they'll eventually figure it out because the thing with web point web three mm. that i immediately like i now think is kind of smart if awful and will like ruin things further <laughs> is that it you're going to be getting license fees for things that should never have license fees. Like that's technologically impossible now because like it takes, it would take the blockchain so fucking long, but in the future, you know, like, um, a conglomerate, a conglomerate, uh, they have a subsidiary that like owns, they buy and sell gift rights 
like in the way that you would with musicians masters yeah. and so when you use use or see like the drake clapping gif you pay the equivalent of like 0.02 cents to eth <laughs> to some asshole but and right now, not, to drake, to not to drake yeah. you know drake, drake's not seeing that money <laughs> well that that's the richest man in the world is the man the most gifable man who owns his masters <laughs> well, well that's they they're huge on like ownership too like all of this is really I mean, this is why it's probably a perfect topic for you guys to look at because it's they they really focus on you own this and like no one else can own it without sort of like paying you for it and and it's all focused on like transactions around what your image is or what whatever and it's very it's just super dark in the in the way you kind of view the world for a lot of people you know well yeah I mean it, it, it's this this idea of ownership like you know you own this gift you own this this piece of art even if it is just a JPEG and like you know theoretically uh, one of the like original utopian ideas about the internet is that like the the ease at which you could duplicate information and spread it like for free totally. would you know li like liberate humanity would spread you know knowledge and learning and uh, important information but now it's like uh, everyone can buy buy a piece of that information and then just sort of squat and like lease it out unlike buying a painting where like you buy the painting and then like i don't know you can like have it be displayed in a museum or charging people to come see the painting but like this would be the equivalent of like yeah you're you're charging rent for anyone who's thinking about the mona lisa yeah or wants to like that's that's why i totally agree i feel like that's why a lot of internet idealism like to your point the early versions of the internet the the like stewart brands of the world or the tim berners lees of the world or people who are like really like we need to make information free and like you know this is a good thing democratizing blah 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 you know it's it just feels like the money that has come in has really perverted a lot of that but it's still dressed up in these sort of uh, the idealism of what the internet was supposed to be, right? And like, there are people who I think the the, the current class of people that are doing the Web three stuff are there's a mix of people who actually do believe this is transformational. There's people who are total hucksters and are making boatloads of money, even though what they're doing is bullshit. You know, doing like literally a George Floyd NFT or something. You know, making money off of the the backs of all these other folks. And then there are folks who just see this FOMO and like leaving Facebook to get into the latest blockchain thing because there's there there is so much money flowing into the space. It's super really it's it's dark. What is um I you're the only person I could really ask this question. Oh, uh, thank you. What 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 is the fascination with like web three people in general, but more mm. specifically like crypto people with um with meta like what are what are they seeing that you know it looks idiotic to us and yeah it looks like what all technology in the 70s was to people even 10 years later yeah what what do they see there is it just that it's like oh this is like shitty transhumanism and eventually we'll have the real version do, when, when you say meta you mean their pursuit of the metaverse sort of thing yeah, that idea? yeah. the metaverse shit is wild to me of, of like how fast it came on like do you guys i mean i think i mean for me it makes sense because like what we're seeing here is capitalism finding another frontier that it, it requires right capitalism cannot function without a frontier of accumulation mm. and there is none in the terrestrial world anymore so this is the last frontier <laughs> and it we and for that to work you have to transfer real social value from the real world to the cyber realm. Like the, the logic of an NFT is that owning this thing digitally has the same emotional connection to, that I have to things I own IRL. And as soon as you make that transfer, as soon as people are actually uh, operating a circulating economy in digital currency, in a digital world, then you are uh, creating the social conditions where everything that libertarians of the uh, technologically inclined ilk have been horrified of, of coming, comes to pass. You don't want to eat the pugs. You don't want to live in the pod. The, a th Web 3.0 leads directly to a world where you live in a fucking dog kennel <laughs> and you have an Oculus strapped to your face and you live and work and you do a real job. And even in there, you think that you're like the alpha, uh, like post left, uh, you know, smart guy who avoided <laughs> the trap of a uh, globo homo and you're literally living that world. But it's okay because you've transferred everything, including your, uh, like your 
emotional connection to objects into this uh, cyber realm that you'll have to immersively engage with. It can't be a screen. That's where Meta comes in. And that's why Meta is a necessary component of this. Everything you just said is what Mark Zuckerberg would say, but good. Like, exactly. with a positive spin on it, right? <laughs> right. Like, that's not as a bad that. thing. That's how, that's how politics and uh, is impossible in, like, inside the framework of capitalism. Because if you're like these guys and you are horrified by what's coming, by what capitalism is giving us, but you can only see... Like it's Janice face of like multiculturalism and, and woke capital and all that. And, and that's its face to you. Like the only alternative because collectivism is out of the picture is every man for himself, every man grasping at technology. And then the better man, the smarter man winning the Darwinian struggle. And I'm going to be that of course. <laughs> and so then your attempt, your depoliticized sort of, you know, uh, basic setting American libertarian response is to grasp these level, these uh, weapons of technology. And by doing that, forging your own fucking chains. Mm. Well, I mean, as long as we're talking about, uh, about Zuckerberg and meta, like, I mean, you, you, re you recently written about like, could you just provide some context for, for which like the Facebook is now they're meta, they're yeah. launching the metaverse. And it was so successful that they lost $230 billion <laughs> of market valuation in one it's day. Like, but to me, it's like, obviously this is just Uber on an accelerated scale.